Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Most scientists estimate that the universe is 13.77 billion years old and that the Earth is 4.54 billion years old, while human beings have only been on Earth for less than 200,000 years. To put those numbers in perspective, if you stretched out your arms and your entire wingspan was representative of Earth's geological history, and then you took a nail file and took just a little bit of the edge off of your fingernail, you would have just wiped out all human history. There's this Carl Sagan quote about a photo of Earth taken from Voyager on its way out to deep space that echoes the sentiments of Kohelet, the teacher, in the ancient wisdom book called Ecclesiastes. Here's the quote. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being who ever was lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. So here we are on this pale blue dot, tiny specks of dust coming into existence for a moment hurling through space and time, only to flicker back out after a few moments. These moments, these are all we have in this life. We work, we laugh, we cry, we make love, we write books, we build empires, we wage wars. But we often try to ignore the fact that these moments are temporary that all our empires and the gross national product, our art and our literature, our $300 designer jeans, all of our knowledge and technology, creativity and legacy is erased. It's all going to flicker out at some point with everything else. Vapor, Havel, meaningless. Everything and everyone is a vapor, here for a few moments, and then gone. This sobering thought can be depressing, or it could be absolutely freeing. We can either go the way of many around us and ignore this fact, medicating and numbing ourselves in avoidance of the truth of our humanity. Or maybe there's another way. We could embrace it. We could recognize our humble place in this universe. We could recognize the silliness of human arrogance and empire. And perhaps as a result, we could learn to appreciate and fully experience the moments that we have as the gifts that they are. Think about when you were young. Do you remember getting worried and stressed about things? things that seem so important at the time. Now how do you feel about those things? The issues that felt like life and death 
Like how the kids didn't give you a fair turn on the playground that day. How do you feel about that now? Do you laugh about it? Does it seem silly? So what are you worried about today? Do you really think it is any less silly than what you were worried about as a child? Your job? Vapor. Your apartment? Vapor. Your school loans? Vapor. Everything and everyone you love and worry about? It's all vapor. Are you worried about being unique or important? In our society, we worship our individuality. We love to talk about our fingerprints and snowflakes and how every individual is unique. But have you ever looked at a snowflake? I mean, they're all kind of the same. Back the camera up a little bit and you are nothing but a human being, a speck of dust in time and space, not all that distinguishable from the seven billion other specks of dust swirling around you. How many of our moments on the pale blue dot do we waste worrying and stressing about the vapor? The Kohelet, the teacher in Ecclesiastes, shows us the vanity of human toil and worry. Another teacher came and taught about the vapor like this. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what are you so worried about? What causes you stress? Because it's going to the dirt like everything and everyone else. It is vapor, mist, smoke. This doesn't have to be depressing. In fact, it might even be liberating. Finitude, after all, is actually what makes life sweet. Christmas time can be such a wonderful and magical time of year because it only happens once a year, not in spite of it. Parents treasure their moments with their young children at home precisely because they know those moments won't last forever, not in spite of that truth. So take a breath. Recognize your frailty. Recognize that the things that feel so weighty and worrisome in the back of your mind right now are nothing but vapor. Feel your breath. Recognize your lungs keeping you alive without your ability to make them work or not. Your heart is beating. Your cells are working together to keep you alive. And it's all magical and mysterious and beautiful. Life on planet Earth is a gift. And you only get it for as long as you get it. And then the match gets blown out. So set your hearts, not on things of Earth, not on the vapor, but let go. Fully open your heart to both the gift and the giver. The mystery, the beauty, that in which we live and move and have our being, that which we call God, the oneness who holds the vapor together, who somehow brings meaning into the meaning.